I've seen straightening and cropping before when we were working with the guided edit mode. Now I want to show you how it works inside the full editing environment. Not that there's much difference, but I do think that it's pretty good to know. So we have a familiar image on screen of this Dallas skyline as it is, and it's one that we corrected of course in the previous video using the remove color cast command and we know that it's going to require a degree of straightening but things aren't going to be as easy as they initially look mostly due to the amount of perspective that we're dealing with anyway make sure that you've zoomed out of the image so we can take all of it in something like 50 percent should do the trick now come over to the toolbox and grab the straighten tool which is located in the third section of tools second down on the right side just about here and we could press the P key on the keyboard to access that as well. Once we've selected it we get a couple of options in the options bar. Firstly what do we want to do with the canvas when we rotate the image and then whether or not we want to rotate all the layers in the image or just the one we have active. I'll leave the first option set to grow or shrink canvas to fit which will give us an opportunity to use the crop tool because when we rotate the image we will increase the size of the canvas to allow for that rotation. If you want to crop the additional canvas automatically then you can choose the second option crop to remove background which does a great job by the way of taking control of that cropping process. Now we need to find something in the image that should be straight and if we were looking straight at these buildings then we could just choose the roof line or the side of the buildings. However because we're talking about an image that has a huge amount of perspective in it most of these elements are not supposed to be straight in the first place. When you get this kind of problem you may just need to try a few different things to see which one comes off best. Maybe a few different points. And what I came up with in this example was the left side of this tall building that disappears into the fog. So to make that our line, I'll click at the lower end of the tower and I'll drag upwards to about here and then I'll release. Now, what the heck has gone on? You're probably thinking, and I'm thinking, well, We've made the image 10 times worse from what we've just done, quite obviously, from the screen. What's happened, though, is that the software is straightening in respect of a horizontal line. We drew a vertical one, so it's rotated the image 90 degrees. Let's undo that by hitting Ctrl or Command Z on the keyboard. Now, how do we tell elements that we want to rotate the image in respect of the vertical line? Well, let's go ahead and click that same starting point. Now, once we've clicked that, we can start to drag, of course, as we did before. But this time, once we've clicked, I want you to hold down the Control key here on the PC or the Command key over on the Mac and then continue to drag. Find where we want to plonk the point down, let's say about here. So I'll release the mouse with the Control or Command key still pressed and we get the rotation we are looking for. Okay, well that's good. We now need to crop away the additional canvas that has been added to the image. So let's come over to the toolbox again, and this time we'll select the crop tool, which is just above the straighten tool, just about here. This time I'm going to change the cropping aspect ratio in the options bar to use photo ratio, and now I'll drag over the areas of the image I want to keep the best that I can. We now can reposition the entire crop boundary by just dragging inside the confines like so and we can place it anywhere we want but the center would be preferable in this example of course. Now we can just drag these corner handles to make sure the crop boundary is as tight to the edges as possible. Sometimes it can be a little bit awkward to get things exact but when you are happy as I am here either hit return or press the little green tick mark down at the bottom and that will do nicely. Now before we finish up let me show you a couple of things that may come in handy somewhere down the line. You'd have noticed that when we created the crop boundary we dimmed the brightness of the area we weren't including inside the crop boundary itself. So if I drag again you'll see what I mean. I'm talking about this area right here. So if I want to change that I'll escape out of the crop modification come up here to the edit menu 
and then all the way down to the bottom to choose the preferences option and then choose the display and cursors option just like so. When that opens you can see the crop tool option down here at the bottom and you can change the color and opacity of those things. I'm not going to do that at the moment however so I'll cancel out. The final thing I want to show you regarding the crop tool is up here in the image menu. So come up here to the image menu and then click on rotate and you'll see two options down at the bottom straighten and crop image and straighten image. Now you might be wondering why we didn't use either of these for the straightening and cropping process we just got done doing. Well the reason is that both of these commands were designed for straightening and cropping scanned images. So if you scan four or six images at once on your scanner and then bring them into elements then this command will work out how to make the necessary edits or the necessary crops and it will also make sure that the images if they weren't straight on the flatbed of the scanner are flat when you finish with them. They're really great commands for scanned images but next to useless for straightening photographs based on a horizon line or a building as we just used simply because it's got absolutely no way of knowing what in the image should be straight. Well I hope that's helped. Coming up next we're going to be looking at the smart brush. Mm -hmm.